First things first, Riley, how are you? I'm just fine. Doing really well. Glad to be here in Holland. All right. Um, well, before we talk about the record, I'd like to uh, go back a little bit. Yes. Do you have a first musical memory or something that musically made an impact on you? My first musical memory that made an impact on me, I think it was probably Led Zeppelin IV. That was like the first CD I bought on my own that wasn't my parents. I still think that record's good. It's not their best, but I remember hearing like going to California and like it was like a total like space vibe that I love and it's a great song. I learned to finger pick. That's the first song I ever learned to finger pick. So yeah. How did you uh, get introduced to Led Zeppelin? Why this particular album? Oh, I mean, like when you're like in fifth grade and everybody thinks they're cool with like a Led Zeppelin shirt they got from Kmart, you know, you, right. just, you know about it. And I mean, that's just a great record. I don't think I sound anything like Led Zeppelin, but that was like the first band that I thought it was cool to like. It felt cool to like them, you know. It's a great band. You know. And then you say it's not their best. What what did you discover afterwards? Oh man, they got so many way better records than that. That record's like they got some bogus songs on four. I mean, three super good. Fizzle Graffiti. That's like so long. You know, like it's like that uh, record's great. Yeah, I loved it. And and were you playing guitar by that point? Not well. I mean, I totally sucked at it. I mean, but like yeah, I plucked around and stuff and kind of messed with it. What what age were you when you started? I started playing guitar when I was like 12 years old. I had like a second hand guitar. A family friend gave me. It was like just a piece of junk, and I didn't even know like how to use it or anything. Just kind of sat there for a long time. Why did you decide to start playing it? I mean, I wasn't good at anything else. I sucked at school. Uh, couldn't skateboard. It was that or skateboarding. Then I couldn't skateboard at all, so I chose the guitar. How long did it take then for you to, or at least for you to think you were any good at the guitar? I mean, I still feel like I'm learning every day. I think in the last few years. I don't like cringe when I hear my own stuff. Like it's it's getting better, I think. But I'm always trying to learn more and try to get better all the time. So yeah, there's never an end to that. And then you mentioned uh, Led Zeppelin being around sk skating. What kind of town was Ro uh, Rockford, Illinois? Uh, it's like a classic Midwest town, kind of just like a lot of closed down factories and gangs and violence. But it's it's a cool place, I guess, to like leave. You know, it's like kind of just not much to do there. It's like every there is like kind of like morale is pretty low, but everybody just moves to Chicago, which is what I did. You know, it's like only like an hour away from there. Yeah, but I mean, cheap trick is from there. Mm. That's about it. You know, everybody's like cheap tricks from here, right? That's good, right? You so know? that's your legacy. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. But was there some kind of music scene to speak of when you were growing up? Yeah, there's a lot of punk rock. There's a skate park called the Pit, which is like. Located like in a terrible neighborhood, mm -hmm. the skate park always had shows on Fridays and Saturdays. And if I could get my dad to like, you know, give me ten bucks for mowing the lawn or something, I'd always go. There's like tons of punk bands, you know, so that was fun. You know, like going to see a lot of punk bands, like just crusty, crappy punk bands, and drinking beer in the parking lot and like hoping the cops don't come, kind of thing, you know. Right. So, so for you, how come you didn't go down that punk road then, in terms of the music you played and, and liked? Yeah, I mean, I'm a massive fan of punk still, and I was in a lot of bands like that growing up. It was fun. It was just like everything else sucked except going to band practice after mm -hmm. school, you know. And I don't know, but that's how I got into like a lot of different stuff I'm into now. And like the whole punk touring circuit is like how I started, you know, it's like playing basements and house shows, and I still do that. What am I talking about? Yeah, I still do that. But yeah, I mean, like that taught me a lot about just like working really hard at music, you know. What what was that period like? Because um, well, I should say that there wasn't much of the scene, and then then you moved to uh, Chicago. Yeah. Was it was it tough trying to make it as a as a musician or trying to pursue that road? No, I mean I didn't really have a backup plan. I still don't. I mean I sleep on a couch at my friend's house still. You know, okay. it's like this is all I can do. It's all I want to do. But yeah, I mean breaking into music there isn't hard at all. Everybody's pretty cool there. It's not like a big competitive city. And everybody like talks shit on New York and LA, but like those really are like competitive cities mm -hmm. where everybody's like going there to like get their song in a like a commercial or something. I feel like, and but like in Chicago, it's just like I don't know. You're not gonna get famous from there usually. You know, you're just you're playing music because it's fun. And, like it's it's easy to do there. It's so cheap to live there, you know. So okay. people have a lot of time to play music. But there's also a very rich tradition of music in, in Chicago. Oh, totally, man. With like soul tunes and like blues, like right. blues. Yeah, totally. And like it's just vibrant there still, you know. So, so did that 
affect you when you move there? Yeah, I mean, I love that music. I mean, I can't say that, uh, you know, I'm like some like continuation of that by any means. And a lot of that came from like, just like you know, decades of history, you know. And but I definitely respect and honor that music. You know, it's there was so much like hard work ethos there, you know, and like all those people like came up and like kind of started a revolution with tunes, you know, and like put out their own records on their own labels or like mm -hmm. started a small label, you know, and like Chicago's always been tough, you know, like the city's tough as nails, you know, it's so, like a lot of that music came from that environment, yeah, it's all amazing, yeah. Uh, as, as you say, it's not really reflected that much in your own music, but then uh, there's something in your bio about your guitar being in the pawn shop uh, a bunch of times. Oh yeah, I mean sometimes you gotta bring, I mean not so much lately, but yeah, this old guy's uh, had a few <laughs> scary trips to the pawn shop. She always comes back, you know. She always comes back to me once I get some cash. W when did you get this particular guitar? Um, got it like four years ago at this shop in Chicago on the north side at a very reasonable price. It's a sweet guitar. It holds up. Whoever had it before me uh, put some dings in it, but they treat it right. It sounds great. I swear by it. I'll never get rid of it again. I'll never put it in the pawn shop again. Uh, but but that, that was kind of trying to make it as a musician and, and, and just... Oh yeah, totally. It. I mean, I'm still trying to make it as a musician, you know, and nothing's ever like for certain in this kind of business or whatever you want to call it that I'm in, so I try to work as hard as I can, do it every day, yeah. And then when you were in Chicago, you met a lot of people you, you play with now, so... Totally. So, um, what did that add to your music? What was your... Did you have a plan when you, when you went there and thought about making your own music and, and releasing it? No, I mean, I didn't really have a plan at all. It's just like I knew I wanted to play music and have fun. But I mean, I met, yeah, I met all those musicians just through like going to gigs a lot and like going to jazz gigs a lot because they're all jazz dudes. Right. So I met all them through just like playing a bunch of shows and you know, somehow I convinced them to like jam with me after a while and they're like my, my best buds, you know, so it's, it's really fun. And this jazz influence for you, has it been there for you? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely like... I wouldn't consider myself a jazz guitarist at all. That'd be a farce to jazz music if like I'm considered a jazz right, guitarist, right. you know. But I mean yeah, that music's huge for me, you know, just especially like the whole um like improvising elements of that, you know, like the song can change so much. It's like a lot of jamming and those guys are just like top notch, you know, they mm -hmm. they go around the world to do that, like professionally, you know. So the jamming element is like totally like it falls back on them and me like just working together and like having this musical relationship that changes every night on stage, you know. And, and this is something you try to capture on the record? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, those are all, like a lot of those songs were like 10 minutes when we originally recorded them, but we had to like chop them down, you know, because mm -hmm. like we just jam out on them for so long. So a little bit, um, this is your second record, uh, Primrose Screen. Yeah. You had a, a record before, um, All Kinds of Me. All kinds of, all kinds I, of you. I, I, sorry, yeah. all kinds of you. But, um, so, but the title track isn't on that. Uh, record. Yeah, that's weird. I think that song, there's a song called "All Kinds of You" on the new record. I mean, last yeah. record's called "All Kinds of You." Right. And uh, I wrote that first record, and then like a few weeks after it came out, I was like, I kind of want to write a song with that title. It's a cool okay. title. I guess it's just a song written too late. Uh, I wrote a song like three weeks too late, you know. But. I was going to change the title, but my, my friend said it'd be funny. Oh, so, like so, so the song wasn't uh, written? No, it was written like after it came out. Okay. I don't know why I did it either. Yeah, it's a nice song, though. It's just a song written a little too late, I guess. But it was, the, was it the first song then that ended up on? Yeah, record? it was like the first song I wrote for this record. I, didn't really, I haven't really played it live or anything. But yeah, it's the first song I wrote after the other record came out. Yeah. What, what started it off, this song? Uh, it was like last winter, like winter like a year ago or something, you know, and it was just like really cold out. And there's like some bleak moments in Chicago. Mm -hmm. and there's like so many different like, I don't know, mindsets you can have, like in that kind of just like weird depressing era. I'm not like a super depressed dude. Like I don't like cry every night or anything, you know, but like there's like all these like weird depressive sort of attitudes you can have during that time of year when it's like dark and you're inside, your heat's mm -hmm. busted, and you only have like ramen noodles and like half a gallon of milk, you know. So I think like there's just all these weird sort of personalities that can come out from me, you know, like during this, like all kinds of you, you know, it's like there's so many different head spaces in that time.